Hello guys, this is just going to be a quick teardown um, video. I'll be doing a few of these videos to show you the internals of just all devices I just have laying around. So this is a Cisco Linksys E1200 uh, version 2 um, router. Now it's just a cheap router. Um, I never used this. I was just given this by a school and it's like I didn't even need it, but whatever. Um, I flash DDWRT on it, which it can support. And um, it's just a ch cheap $20 router. However, even routers that are $200, $300 that you get from Walmart, etc., you're going to see a common trait about the components they put in this. It's cheap, all-in-one solutions. So here's the back of it. Um, I had the poke open three screws. I had to take off the rubber feet and unscrew those and then this thing basically out I wasn't going to bore you with the um, destruction because um, this thing basically it snaps off and it's really tight so you have to have like three or four screwdrivers on each end to basically pop this thing off but um, if you see inside of it boom they can make this thing a lot smaller look at that the chip is barely taking up any of the space so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these um, ICs on the board, identify what this stuff is. Okay, so the first thing we got is we inside this board we have our main um, CPU, our system on a chip. This is a Broadcom BCM5357 and it's clocked at 300 megahertz. This is a MIPS processor and it is features 2x2 um, two two MIMO technology and also it is um, capable of running DDWRT or tomato. So that's the, that's basically the heart of this machine. And yes, 300 megahertz, I believe, one core, and MIPS architecture. Now over here we have another IC. This is basically our our RAM. This is a Winbomb W99425G6JH. It's 32 megabytes of DDR SD RAM at 250 megahertz. And then this little chip over here, this would actually be our flash chip. Um, this is basically, in essence, the SSD of the router, <laughs> to put it in easy terms. Now this is your flash chip, and I know I can't really get in there very well. There we go. So this is our flash chip. This basically stores um, the OS and configuration settings which it's flashed with DDWRT right now instead of the default Linksys crap. And it's a Mactronix 25 L6406E CMOS serial flash chip at 8 megabytes. So this router only has 8 megabytes of storage. Basically an 8 megabyte SSD in essence. So you have 8 megabytes of storage, not gig, and you have 32 megabytes of RAM, and you have a one core 300 megahertz CPU. Now obviously this is going to be this is running a little, really really tiny Linux based operating system just based on networking but you get to see the drift okay throughput throughput wise 300 megahertz eh, you'd be lucky to get 100 megabit out of it okay anyway you see these two things right here and this right here these are your um, Ethernet transformers. These will be basically what runs the switch, the four port Ethernet switch, along with, um, well, it's actually would be a five port Ethernet switch, but they bridge this into the CPU so it can do basically a routing. Anyway, that's what that is. Um, under this is an RF shield um, to protect against EMI and nearby stuff. From interfering with it and that there's definitely an IC under this which means um, this is most likely a the Wi-Fi chip so it doesn't get any interference so I will be cracking that off um, I don't have the right tools and equipment so I'll crack that off and show you under there in a second the rest of the stuff we just got you know got a couple caps let's see if those are a good brand I, I highly doubt it so let me see here cap Exxon if you can see right there, and 220 microfarad at 10 volts. 
Okay, and that'd probably most likely be DC. And I'm pretty sure the other one's basically at the same specification. Let me take a look here. Can't really show you on camera. But, oh, the rate at 105 degrees Celsius, which is um, for um, capacitors, that's actually good. But these are probably cheap, crappy caps, not from Japan. Let me see here. 105 degrees Celsius. What's, okay. 200 and 20 microfarad at 25 volts and their cap exxon brand which is not a good cap brand um, cheap cap brand these these caps will fail two or three years times and you'll have to desolder them and put in better caps such as Nijikon, Panasonic, um, Rubicon, Elna those are all good capacitor brands so yeah these are just cheap Chinese caps you want to go with Japanese caps um, right there that will be your um, this is basically what's going to take in the 12 volt DC and basically down convert it that's basically your buck what technicians would call it I'm not an electronics engineer I just know some of these terms and stuff from watching a lot of technology videos now this device they call it a router okay and if you notice on the back you have a one ethernet port for internet that comes in from the modem so this does not function as a modem it just functions as just a router so you connect this to a modem so what this thing is is it's a router a firewall a switch and also a wireless access point as well okay so if you want to see the Wi-Fi antenna in this 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 right here is the Wi-Fi antenna over here this little piece of metal this is your Wi-Fi antenna. Look at that. That is basically the RX um, RF transmitter antenna. Yeah. That should explain. And this is just an all-in-one chip right there. That basically takes care of it all. Um, yeah, you can see the problem. So I'm going to be back and I'm going to pop this open and tell you what that Wi-Fi chip is because I guarantee you it's the Wi-Fi chip. Okay, so I took off that RF can and um, um, nothing interesting. I don't see no Wi-Fi chip. I, um, that's all it was under that RF can. So they wanted to make sure um, no interference. And you see I could... I teared up the board when I was yanking it off. Like I said, I don't care if I break this or not. I have no use for it. Also, I can't forget, we have a crystal clock on here, of course. And it's clocked at 20 megahertz. Um, this basically will um, keep the Ethernet f frames in sync. You have to make sure that you have a high precision clock. Um, so, th this is an all networking gear, audio gear, etc because timing is very important. Also keep the sync for the um, NTP as well, for um, the actual time as well. But yeah, I looked up the 20 megahertz frequency for crystal oscillators, and 20 megahertz is for Ethernet. Um, 10 megabit Ethernet. Um, 25 was for 100 megabit, which this switch is 10 100, so it can do 100 megabit. Um, link so um you thought i'd see another crystal clock on here for that but like i said i'm not an electronics engineer so i don't technically know and i don't have a, a schematic for this either i pop this board out um it comes right out the whole thing and on the back there's nothing of interest so that was just a quick tear down off you can see build quality and just Shit, I don't use ISP routers or routers bought from stores. Um, and you can probably see why. Like I said, this was only $20, but just a quick teardown to show you some of the internals of it. Nothing interesting. Um, I'll be doing more teardown videos at a later time. Thank you.